yeah good evening everyone so just see the first question for today analyze the different approaches to the disaster management with regard to 1999 orissa super cyclone and 2013 phylin cyclone okay basically you have to mention about the disaster management pertaining to the orissa cyclone and also with regard to this phylin cyclone these are the two important things try out this once try this out disaster management with regard to the 1999 super cyclone or is a super cyclone and phylin cyclone give me the framework yes anyone else yeah then models okay basically the question is <clears throat> yes so cyclone basically you can start the introduction with basic definition of cyclone okay yeah so here the, the examiner is asking you the different in approach with regard to the disaster management okay of 1999 orissa super cyclone and 2013 phylin cyclone okay so basically <clears throat> you need to give the differences in approach with regard to the 1999 and 2013 okay so what is the main aspect of 1999 we know how devastating was 1999 orissa super cyclone because at that time there were many many lacunae in approaching the disasters like cyclones okay so the basic means of communication was only television even in the television there were only one or two channels and the signal receiving of the television was very poor so the advance action were or the advance information which can be given to the people was the time which can be given for the people for advance action was very less second is the preparedness the preparedness for the disaster as far as the local administration or the central agencies was not up to the mark and then the reaction time was quite late and hence there was lot a lot of lot of uh, loss in lives as well as the property okay and then the landmark event occurred in 2005 with regard to the disaster management act so this particular act revolutionized the way disasters have been handled in india what happened in 2013 phylin cyclone it has become a case study as to how orissa has handled this particular super cyclone when compared to the 1999 cyclone 
here they have used lot of technology they have used lot of technology okay and they have used lot of advance advancement they have given intimation in advance to the people they have moved people to the safer places to the uplying areas technology was used extensively in communication okay and basically the highlight of 2013 approach was human loss was very very less the human loss was very very less and as a result this particular handling of this 2013 cyclone became a kind of case study and from there till today orissa is leading in you know various type of uh, handling of disaster especially cyclones okay orissa is now one of the important places where the disaster management has become very efficient with regard to the handling of cyclones and hence <clears throat> the main difference between 1999 and 2013 is the evolution of disaster management act 2005 ndrf personnel specific trained forces to attend disasters like cyclone pre plannedness before information so and then instead of reactive today now we are speaking of the proactive approach i am writing something on the screen is it visible to you all yes <clears throat> sir okay so basically instead of a reactive approach today we are taking a very proactive approach okay and then that can be your way forward and hence you can conclude by saying all these points with regard to the first question any doubts here no sir anyone else who has written answers the introduction is slightly longer rajni you can arrive at at the core point from here okay this is the core point Okay. Yes, this is important. Communication was only through this. Preparedness was less. Yes, lot of damage done. Approach for two thousand thirteen. Yes, mock drills. Good points. Good points, Rajni. Okay, and then this map is also good. you should have given a proper conclusion by linking that you know how the technology and the preparedness and the sendai framework also you can write in your basically you can write about sendai framework technology okay and then preparedness ndrf so all these are points which have improved over 1999 okay so then you can conclude your answer by mentioning these points okay 
ओके सर सी द सेकेंड क्वेश्चन फॉर द डे इलिस्ट्रेट द रोल ऑफ क्राइसिस मैपिंग इन डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट सो द टू की टर्म्स क्राइसिस मैपिंग इन डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट ट्राई दिस प्लीज क्लैरिफाई द डाउट विच आई मैं मैसेज वन मिनट संत main difference between asking to write the differences in approach and analyze the differences in approach so they are trying to ask you analyze so analyze means <clears throat> you have to see what is difference you have to mention the differences and analyze why there is the difference okay if you have to mention you have to mention the differences in approach if you have to analyze you have to analyze why there are differences obviously why there are differences because after 2005 landmark event of ndma and the evolution of ndrf and the evolution of technology now the approach itself is different and then we are saying that previously it was a reactive approach and today we are having a proactive approach clear prasad okay right good yeah see the next question illustrate the role of crisis mapping in disaster management <clears throat> so what is the question is about okay the question is about the role of crisis mapping in disaster management what is basically crisis mapping what do you mean if you understand this term the entire question is very easy what is crisis mapping what is crisis mapping anyone what do you understand by crisis mapping yes what do you mean by crisis mapping no one knows what is crisis mapping Sir, mapping of the events through data. What do you mean by crisis? Specially, tell me what do you mean by crisis? First, so what about the disaster, the sir? Yes, sir. Huh? The disaster, disaster, any disaster. Any untoward incident. Yes, sir. Unprecedented incident. Or any incident. sudden disaster puts us into crisis. Now, tell me what is crisis mapping? so trying to understand such disasters before hand trying to understand such disasters before hand is basically crisis mapping is it clear trying to know such events or trying to map such events which will be pos possibly shaking us and it will help us in tackling this situation is called crisis mapping yes or no clear clear about crisis mapping so when we google it uh, we found some uh, some other definition for this crisis mapping so crisis mapping regards to uh, the live mapping of uh, uh, people stuck in locations and the medical aids the uh, locations and uh, intact buildings location and intact roads locations uh, something like that sir sorry and sorry they gave, uh, they gave example for uttarakhand 2013 floods crisis mapping mm -hmm. and uh, haiti earthquake crisis mapping also they gave examples so, so slightly yeah, what, what 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 did they give uh, locations of victims where they stuck and uh, which roads are blocked and which road is available for them and Yeah. Uh, medical yeah. aids locations. Okay, that 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 is they are giving examples of crisis mapping. Okay, those are examples of crisis mapping. What do you mean by crisis mapping? Is is what we are trying to understand. What is crisis? An untoward incident or a sudden incident? 
whatever you are referring the uttarakhand floods or anything are untowards and sudden events right so how do we understand them or how do we able to get information about them is the crisis mapping that is a basic definition how you will do crisis mapping is again a very big issue it involves lot of tools it involves lot of real time data it involves gis systems it involves technology it involves drones it involves super computing all these are the tools for doing the crisis mapping but what is crisis mapping is the basic question basically it is the understanding of the issue or the understanding of the disaster to be able to tag that particular disaster tackle that particular disaster is it clear yes sir so in this context basically crisis mapping is trying to understand that disaster in such a way that we can tackle that particular disaster that is crisis mapping so now how do we do that crisis mapping is by usage of technology so first you start this question by defining what is crisis mapping and then say how do we do crisis mapping how means usage of technology and usage of real time data real time data and if there are any seismic activities what is the seismic records and then if there are any prone areas or you know ecologically sensitive areas what is the data okay and then what are the various locations or what are the zonations which are prone to disasters these are the things which you use to do the crisis crisis mapping so how is over now what is the use of crisis mapping in managing the disaster this is the core element of the question this is the core element of the question what how, what do you do after mapping the crisis for example when there is a cyclone and when you know that the cyclone is having a particular direction like this you will try to evacuate the people in this area so when you are mapping a crisis or when you are mapping a disaster what is the usage of mapping such a disaster during disaster management is again you can write the approach of pmrr if you know the disaster is coming beforehand you can try to prevent the damage or mitigate the extent of damage to great extent then if the crisis is mapped with regard to the disaster you can have real time data about how that particular disaster is moving or going to impact and try to plan your disaster management accordingly and alert the local administration and you can alert the local areas through sms or telecommunication or the gis information systems so that they are ready to tackle the crisis and crisis mapping will also help your ndrf people ndrf national disaster response force to go and have targeted interventions like if you know that one particular village is going to be devastated by the flood or cyclone you will target that village so means focused way you will go and approach the problem when compared to random way so that is the main advantage of crisis mapping and with the focused approach the efficiency of the management forces especially the ndrf forces will be very high and the local administration also will be alert and they are ready to cooperate with the central forces hence the harmony between various forces will increase by having proper crisis mapping okay so all these are the advantages of the crisis mapping you can say in the conclusion by saying that the monitoring and the mapping of the disaster will help a lot in preventing the damage done during the course of disaster hence crisis mapping 
will dynamically help the forces to map the disaster and take focused approach instead of the roundabout approach, thereby improving the efficiency and also containing the damage done by the disaster. Clear? Who has written this answer? Unmute yourself and tell me. Rajini is over. Who else has written? Whose answers are not discussed in the last class? Prasad, you have written? Yes, sir. Okay, good definition. Yes. So basically, you have given different stages of how the crisis can be mapped. Good. You have given a case study. Okay, good. So the main drawback is the communication system which gets impacted during disasters. Yes, power sources. Maybe you can raise usage of drones. Prasad, drones. Okay. Drones are one good technology which we can write many places, especially with regard to disaster because in disasters, many human personnel may not reach that area, but they can send the drones and try to get the analysis of those area. Okay. After solutions, maybe you can mention conclusion and sum it up, sum the discussion, okay? As okay. to what we have said. Clear? Clear. Yeah. Yeah. See the last question of the day. India's commitment to disaster risk reduction, that is DRR, is evident from the fact that it became one of the first countries to align its NDMP, that is National Disaster Management Plan, with the Sendai framework. Okay, what are the salient features of India's first NDMP? How can this plan help in effective disaster management? So various questions are there, but the basic questions are this one and two. These are the core questions. Remaining part of the question can be used in your introduction slightly. So just try for it. So basically, Prasad, the way forward or conclusion, if you are giving solutions in your way forward, then you can give conclusion as a separate side heading. Okay, but if you are not giving any solutions, okay, then you are Conclusion can also have solutions and then conclude, okay? Generally, if it's a bigger answer, try to give both the dimensions. And if the answer is asking for some problem, try to give solutions in your way forward and then conclude. If the question is generic, like, you know, critically examined, so you're already giving positive and negative, so directly you can write conclusion, okay? Or way forward, okay? It's not a generic thing, like, you know, this is a hard and fast tool. It depends on case to case. Clear? Okay, fine. See the last question. India's commitment to the disaster risk reduction is evident from the fact that it became one of the first countries to align with NDMP, align its NDMP with Sendai framework. So basically, they are asking you what are the salient features of the NDMP with regard to the Sendai framework. So you have to mention the salient features of NDMP and then try to connect them with the Sendai framework because India signed Sendai framework, which is applicable up to 2030. So what are the features of NDMP which are in line with the Sendai framework that you have to mention? And how can this plan help in effective disaster management. So basically by listing out the salient features of NDMP with regard to the Sendai framework, next side heading will be how this particular adoption of NDMP in line with the Sendai framework 
will help in effective disaster management so uh, of course the second part is again the standard part which we know and i have written now n number of times even in your dreams you should be able to write this particular approach especially the pmrr approach so in the second part of the question you will again come back to this pmrr approach that is prevention mitigation response and recovery how that has helped in successful handling of many disaster post adoption of ndmp in line with sendai framework so the first part of the question you can introduce by saying how we are prone to disasters and how we have come up with many policies like 2005 ndma etc and then straight away come to the part that after signing of sendai framework we have looked for more proactive approach and more holistic approach and hence try to integrate our ndmp in line with the signed friend sendai framework then come to the salient features what are the salient features basically now it it has become a very proactive approach okay and then it is the ndmp is now focusing on more on prevention and mitigation and it is also focusing on empowering the local administration and then it's now targeting the bottom top approach it is targeting the bottom top approach and then more synergy between various coordination agencies there is now more synergy between various coordination agencies there is clear distinction between non structural and structural parts non structural and structural aspects of the disaster they are segregated and then planned okay and then the plan is now the, there is a clear cut plan for each and every disaster and it is documented and available with the local civil administration okay and then the agencies are having certain protocol now there is a protocol for each and every disaster which they have documented and now there is a checklist for particular disaster for example if the cyclone or the flood is striking a particular region so the district collector has to do 1 2 3 4 so no matter who is the district collector they are supposed to follow this protocol or checklist so this is the new implementation of the disaster ndmp so these are the important points okay which are now part of the ndmp and one more thing is the improvement of the capability capability to fight the disaster capability has increased to fight the disaster now the forces are more trained okay all these are the important aspects of the ndmp with regard to the integration of sendai framework now how this will help in effective disaster management is the question now what is the again try to give the advantages of these points with regard to integration of ndmp with sendai framework now we are able to fight the disasters more proactively with a positive mindset of pmrr approach we are trying to make zonation of vulnerable areas try to plan development in those areas and again you can use the 22nd question in 23rd now we are able to use the crisis mapping in the disaster management okay that you can write and then we are now trying to provide lot of technological inputs to the disaster prone areas and thereby trying to help the fighting of disasters and the phases of various disasters can now be tackled individually than holistically we can have more targeted approach okay and then the recovery from the disasters is now significantly low recovery time previously if the disaster struck any area the recovery time was in months or sometimes years but today within days we are able to recover from the disaster and try to address the disaster immediately okay and also we are able to document the responses for the disasters which are helping us in fighting the future disasters so simply you can write a way forward or conclusion saying that by above inputs we are now in a much better position to fight disasters but the way forward 
is the formation of separate ministry for handling the disasters and because lot of time is wasted in coordinating between various agencies the moment we are able to bring all these various forces onto one ministry the co the coordination can be much better and the response towards the disaster will be much faster and much systematic in approach is it clear who has written this answer vasavi you have written good points vasavi good here you can again write the inclusion of technology common ministry all this you can include okay vasavi good points you have made lot of good points just try to include few more points as we have discussed okay is it clear any doubts with regard to today's discussion any doubts regarding today's discussion or any doubts regarding other discussions in general so oh, preparedness a step where we can include in pmrr sir preparedness for a disaster for example when you do a zone zonation mapping for example if the earthquake prone area is mapped beforehand you can be prepared for knowing the out the disaster there right you can be prepared that this area is prone to disaster for example if you know that a particular area is prone for floods what is the preparedness you will do first thing is you will stop construction there and if there are already some constructions if they are illegal you will remove or you will ensure that at least when there is a warning of flood those areas which are prone to the flooding are first evacuated that is the preparedness clear so it comes under mitigation sir no Pre prevention yeah preparedness is mitigation right prevention is different so pmrr pmrr is prevention mitigation response and recovery so preparedness is a kind of mitigation only prevention is completely different because you are trying to prevent the disaster for which you are taking much more proactive steps right from planning the development of that area so basically preparedness is you are anticipating a disaster and preparing yourself response is how you are trying to respond during the disaster so disaster has struck you have no time so how you are responding and then recovery or rehabilitation is the post disaster thing what you are doing so these are the four stages if possible you have to prevent the disaster for preventing the disaster what you are doing you have to ensure that the zonation mapping when you are for example i am taking earthquakes if you know that place is earthquake prone how are you able to construct tall tall towers or trying to unnecessarily threaten the lives okay so these are the four stages clear sir thank you anything else fine so your next class may be on the wednesday okay tomorrow there may not be any class Okay, so just you know prepare and keep writing. Okay, we'll again meet on Wednesday. Okay, good night.